Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here today back on our Factor 2 where we are continuing on with this full weekend's worth of racing around the Hungara Ring today in the Porsche Super Cup. This is the second time I've hit up this series so far this year. The first race was in Austria around the well, virtual Spielberg Red Bull Ring, A1 Ring, whatever you want to call it. And today we're heading over to Hungary for what is sort of a recreation of the round that took place here a couple of weeks back. One of the few rounds that has actually gone ahead this year. I'm not too sure what the rest of the Porsche Super Cup calendar looks like, but all I know is that it does, well, virtually follow the Formula One calendar. So I guess whatever, whatever's going on there might be the same as, <laughs> as what's going on here. Today's race, seven laps, approximately half of what it was in the real life race. We've got 26 cars. I've managed to put it on pole only by two hundredths of a second. A pretty, uh, pretty close qualifying session. Setup wise, I've just basically gone for, well, as you can see, there's really not that much you can change on this car. It's very, very stock standard. This is the Steam Store version of the Porsche Super Cup car, or Porsche GT3 Cup car, I should say, uh, with just a 2019 set of skins and drivers. Uh, as you can see, most of these guys, well, obviously all of these guys competed at some point last year. And yeah, without any further ado, let's hit up the track, get on this formation lap, and we'll be underway shortly. All right, fields lining up. Here we go, Porsche Super Cup around the Hungara ring. Seven laps on the board. Yeah, it's boogie. And now the start, just about. Right down into turn one. This is where all the chaos happens on that first lap. Oh, three wide behind us. <laughs> Jesus. Let's try and utilize that. Get away from the pack. Now, Hungara Ring is known as the Monaco without walls. Because it is just nothing but turns, except for maybe this straight, or little straight here, and the main straight itself. But truly a sort of historic uh, sort of stop on the F1 calendar. This track's been around for ages now. It's horrible to watch in my opinion. There's really nowhere that they can pass, especially in Formula 1. It's not too bad in likes of Formula 2 and Formula 3, but especially in the Super Cup and F1 in real life, it's, yeah, it's, just, it's a bit of a struggle. But fun track to drive nonetheless. Had a pretty successful lap, got a little bit of a gap. Try and keep the head down now, no mistakes. All the mods that you see in this video you can find in the description below if you have Alpha 2 and want to check them out. I do love this track mod, this rendition of the Bangara ring is really, really neat. It's got two working DRS zones, that you, the same two DRS zones that you'd see in real life. First lap is in the books. Two and a half second lead. That is good. Yeah, I must admit, I'm not a big fan of this rendition of the Porsche GT3 Cup car. I just don't find it the most the most realistic rendition out there. Oh, that's too much rear brake. I have driven one of these cars in real life before and definitely find the iRacing version a lot better, or a lot closer to the real thing, except for the tyre model. But no, this, this series itself, I, I, I do struggle to watch in real life the supercar, it's just, it just bores me to death to be honest. These cars on F1 tracks I don't think they're really designed for F1 tracks. They're really more designed for sort of those country club tracks that you get sort of, I guess in Australia, the Porsche Carrera Cup in Australia is absolutely insane to watch. You know, when you get these cars going around those three circuits, down under, like like these around Bathurst are so good to watch. And Clipsal, or the Adelaide Street Circuit, as it's called. No, on F1 circuits, it's just, I don't know. 
track's too wide, too long. Not bumpy enough. <laughs> Everyone loves watching Porsches go over bumps. But I'm running away with it right now. I must admit, three second lead. I've got the difficulty set to 100%. So a little bit lower than what I usually do. I probably could have upped it a bit, to be honest. But, right. Oh, lap traffic already. <laughs> an issue. Oh my god. Ugh. Understeer. Where are you going? Max van Splunteren. I remember him. From the karting days over in Europe. Oh, that's a lot of curve. Okay, that lost us a bit of time there. Good old Jackson Evans, one of my old teammates behind us. <laughs> the second guy, quite, <laughs> there are quite a few people in this, in this field. Jackson Evans, obviously a uh, Kiwi-born sort of Australian, raised in Australia. Good through this middle sector. I think it's the last sector that I seem to be struggling a little bit. Understeer. Come on, baby turd for me. Yeah, this car is not handling good at all, but I managed to get away with it now. Mind you, we've got a lap car between us and second place, which might help us out a bit. getting it all that right so far, I must admit. Still just holding on to that gap. Need some consistent smooth laps. We should be good. Astro is not grippy at all. Yeah, still a lot of fun to drive though, even though I don't think this is the most realistic rendition as I said of this car. It's still, everyone loves driving a Porsche, especially the cup car. It just bounces around, you can really sort of chuck it over curbs and it will sort of stick, well, for the most part. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a much better lap here. Alright, just coming on to the last lap now, managed to keep that gap to Evans in second, pretty much just about the same the whole way through the race. It's not been the most entertaining of races, but, oh well, such is the Porsche Super Cup to be honest. It's not the most entertaining series, for sure. I watched the, uh, oh, at the time of this sort of recording, we just had the British Grand Prix, and the Super Cup support race was absolutely boring as batshit. I mean, Silverstone, I think, there was, the thing is, it was quite close racing as well. It was like a second, well, at the end of, I think, the second lap, all the way through to the actual end of the race, there was less than a second between each car from second all the way down to, I think, 11th or 12th. And it stayed that way, like, literally, the entire race. Not one person made a lunge, no one made a dive, it was just so freaking placid. I don't know how they seem to, I mean, I guess everyone was just so worried about, you know, damaging the car, because I guess as soon as you get side-on-side -side contact in these things, you will sort of pluck a wheel out of alignment. They are quite fragile. 
but at the same time, it's like, man, boring to watch, but there's nothing more fun than driving one of these cars, I must admit. On a, on a track where you got big curbs, you can sort of clobber <laughs> Exhibit A. It's a lot of fun to drive, but yeah. <laughs> Quite realistic in that it's not that fun to watch. But anyway, around the second last corner, gonna come across, oh, hopefully not die on this final corner, even though I'm losing a bit of rear end grip, as you can see. Woohoo! Across the finish line, winner! Woo! Love me some of that! We were three tenths faster in the end. Uh, then second place, just going off the fastest lap. But yeah, what a race. Nice little easy one there. Move on to the Formula One race tomorrow, the main event. Actually, no, sorry. Okay, hitting up Formula Two again tomorrow. So I forgot about the sprint race. Yeah, no, that's going to be a load of fun. The first Formula Two race I did this little weekend was absolutely insane. That was a really close finish. Finished second, but we sort of went right down to the wire, racing for the lead on that final lap. Let me go check that out if you haven't seen that just yet. But yeah, stay tuned for the Formula Two sprint race tomorrow around the Hungar Ring. And then we'll finish it all up in two days' time with the F1 race itself. Until then, catch you guys later.